This is Knuckle off of a Mitsubishi Expo. <laughs> I harvest this in the junkyard and I couldn't get the uh, couldn't get the CV axle to separate easily. Couldn't get the nut off, so I just went ahead and cut the boot and yanked it out. Had to pay for that. But basically what I'm doing is I need this knuckle for the colt. Um, I also need a socket that stays on there. And the reason why I need this for the colt is because it fixes the bump steer issue and uh, it fits the seal and bearing size of the turbo DSM. You can see the bearing surface right there, the seal, and the sleeve that's pressed through it that has that outer hub on it. And what I need to do is knock this outer hub off and uh, cram the Mitsubishi hub back in it. And that, my friend, is how you do a five lug conversion for a Colt front end. Trolling again. Come on outside. The sun's shining. Yeah, and it's raining. Quit it. The second I pull the hood off and start trying to work on the Colt. Look at the shadow. Beautiful day. All right, kids, that's what a bad wheel bearing looks like. Slop everywhere. See that wobble, wobble, wobble? That's the reason why this thing is nearly impossible to roll right now. Got to drink something pink because I'm getting too manly up in this beast. Alright, so I'm sitting up here at my cousin's shop with the front suspension from the Colt. In order for me to get to the bearings, there's a couple of things I have to take off this front suspension first. What you're looking at is, uh, these are DSM front knuckles from a 92 all-wheel drive. And uh, what we've got here is the stock first generation all-wheel drive springs. Like a fool, I thought I was gonna use these. I don't need any parts of the suspension. I don't need these knuckles, but what I do need is the outer portion of the hubs and the brakes and the hats. Those are off of the old Mirage as well. These are not DSM parts. The DSMs have three prongs on them. These have two. I have to take off the brakes and, uh, and the shock in order to get this on the bearing press. And I'll show you what this is all about. This is a bearing press and it's got a boom box hiding down inside the top of it. Boom box. You remember those things, kids? 
No? Damn, I'm old. And this is how you do it. So I've got a socket in there, and uh, you just hog it down, make sure it's going straight until it falls out of the other side. There you go. There's the inner bearing race. And what I need to do is take this five lug piece and uh, cut this inner race off and prepare it for the next bearing that's going in. One of the ways people deal with this is to use an angle grinder and uh, you can cut it an angle to get through that. Don't worry about the seal that's below it, it doesn't get reused and we'll be replacing it anyway. But make sure you cut at an angle where you're not interfering with the studs. Once you've got the groove started, you turn it on its side. Don't squeeze too hard with the vise there. And hit it with a chisel a few times. And all the tension is off of it because you've heated it up with the grinder. And also, you can split it off. loose enough to pull it, clamp it this way, and I will just knock it off with the chisel. If you cut far enough through it, you can split the bearing. This one's already come loose enough that that's all I need. There we go. Pull the seal out. There's a crack that goes through it right there. We managed to uh, create a heat line, and then when I hit it with a chisel, it split it. That loosened up the bearing. And you can do the same thing. It's a piece of cake. Just make sure you don't cut all the way through that. So as a result of that, it doesn't have any scratches or dings or any damage in it. It didn't cut through this piece below it, so all the seals will work properly once we get it back together. So here we have the Expo knuckles, and they're already pressed apart. We've got the four lug pub out of it. It's a good idea to have something handy to put all this greasy, nasty stuff in. Alright, now with that piece out, you can see the inner race. Now, this piece is also a pressed in part. And in order to get it out, we've got to force it out the other side. On the other side of this, we've got a seal. Let me sort of pry that out of the last one. There we go. Got that out. There's the inner bearing race. And what you find over here, if you get a rag and scoop the grease out, there's a snap ring. That snap ring needs to come out. There we go. Snap ring. So that's it with the bearing pressed out. All I'm going to do now is clean that up and get ready for the new bearing. Here we've got a centric bearing. This replaces 513036 and FW101. And uh, basically what this is, is this is the bearing that rides in between the uh, knuckle and the hub assembly. And the inner ring can slide apart so be careful with it. It's already greased up pretty well, fairly well packed. And what we do with this is we press this into the knuckle. So this inner race right here can come out. The ball bearings are captive to some degree. It's got a little plastic housing inside of it that holds onto that. It's already packed with grease. What we're gonna do is set this aside. Try not to get it dirty. And see that it is straight and evenly as possible. All right, get it centered underneath it. And get the bottom out. Feel it.
And there you have it. That's pressed in. Now all we have to do is put the snap ring back in it. Okay, this snap ring qualifies as a pain in the ass. What you'll notice about this thing is that it does have two little dimples in here that you would imagine you could squeeze with the pliers. But, uh, and you saw me try to do that when I was taking it apart. Which is really the only way I had to get it going. That you could get a small pack of files. And these are just little miniature files. Like five bucks. You grab a file and file the piece so that you can grab it with a pair of pliers. If you file it at the right angle. And of course it's easier to put this in a vise, but I don't plan to do much with it. And file an edge into it. And then, and then with the edge in it, you could grab it with pliers and squeeze it. Probably have a little further to go, but I'm not doing it that way. That can be a waste of time. And you know, you could drill holes in this to use snap ring pliers. But what I'm gonna do is something else that's just got a feel to it. You can either do this or you can't. But uh, there's a piece that's kind of sunk into there before the section of the bore that uh, holds the snap ring in. And relying on that, you get an edge started. And you just turn the screwdriver as you go around it while holding down on the opposite side. And you pop it into the bore. Smack it down into the groove. And there you go. That's how you put the snap ring back in. Grease. Squishing it in the middle until it comes out the outside of the bearings. It's a good idea to wear gloves when you do this. I'm not wearing gloves. Seals came in. This is a 225230 from National. That's what it looks like. What you want to do, the outside of this is already lightly greased from me rubbing that stuff in there. Make sure you've got it pressed in evenly all the way around. Notice that this seal will fit the seal on a DSM axle, like so, and that's important. Some of the cars that you look for knuckle parts on, on Mitsubishi's, um, some of them have a different seal diameter. A lot of the four lug cars have a smaller axle seal here um, for the hub bearing assembly. So it's important to match that up diameter wise. Just use the DSM seal with the Expo knuckle and uh, you can press the uh, five lug hubs in. Piece of cake. The outer diameter is the same outer diameter on this. And you can just press that in by hand, really. Sometimes you can push them all the way down by hand. The seal for this side is 225450. 225450. Two, 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 two,